Hi everyone, it's Chat about with another video and today I'm going to be talking about Colombian oil and gas giant Ecopetrol, one of the four principal oil and gas companies in Latin America, the largest oil and gas company in Colombia. Really interesting business. Dividend yield always says 14%, it's actually close to 20% right now, over 19.5%. 88.5% state owned. Very similar situation to Petrobras, extraordinarily high dividend yield, which is being paid out, and exceptionally low PE ratio, although not as low as Petrobras, the Brazilian state-owned oil manufacturer that I made a video a couple of weeks ago, I'll link that in the description. A PE ratio on trailing basis of just three. That is exceptionally low. You can see the dividend yield has rose due to decline in the stock price for fears around oil and gas. Perhaps there'll be a windfall tax or the dividend will be cut, which just has not manifested as of yet, and in combination with rising dividends due to exceptional cash flows from higher oil prices, which I believe will continue due to the poxies of OPEC that have been announced recently. So I'm going to analyze this business, look at its dividend yield, and decide whether I think this is an investable business based on the safety of its dividend and the future prospects of this company. Here you see three graphs showing the stock price, trailing 12 months dividend payout and trailing 12 months dividend yield over the last, or oh well, since 2011. And you can see the stock price never really recovered from its late or early 2012, late 2013 highs. It's currently sitting around $11, which is in the ballpark of where it has been since 2017. In that time, it has paid an average dividend yield of probably around 7%. Right now, that dividend yield is far, far above average at 19.47%. Payouts have been a bit spotty, but have generally been decent payouts. Current payout is $2.22 per share. This is an $11 stock that has an exceptional payout right now. And the business has shown a willingness to continue paying this out. Ecopetrol is a vertically integrated powerhouse in the oil and gas industry. Number one in Colombia, 720,000 barrels per day produced in Q3, has pipelines, has a ton of oil reserves, it's continually adding to these pipelines and it's refining is at 80% capacity utilisation rate in Q3. It's a low emission solution, it's the number one self-generator of renewables in Colombia with 112 megawatts of renewable supply capacity. It's continuing to build eco-reserves in Colombia as a green hydrogen pilot and not to mention it is also in the trans transmissions business, it's the number one energy transmission company in Latin America. You look at all these metrics and you're starting to see how this is truly a, a diversified powerhouse in the energy industry and it is just not being priced as such. I think this graph really illustrates the financial robustness of this business. Even when Brent crude prices were as low as $43 in 2020, this business still had a 3% net margin and, and a decent operating income around $2 billion for the year, $0.5 billion in net income. You look on the right hand side of the graph when Brent crude is at much higher prices, Q3 2021 when Brent crude was $61 or $68, pardon. They recorded $16.3 billion in revenue for the quarter, $5.2 billion in operating income, and a net income of $2.8 billion for a 17% net margin. Compare that with the third quarter in 2022, where Brent was a massive $103, and the financials are unbelievable. Nearly $30 billion in revenue, just shy of $12 billion in operating income, and a $6.1 billion net income for the quarter for a 21% net margin. Absolutely outstanding financials for this business. Profitable, even exceptionally low Brent crude prices. Production is still pretty much around that seven 700,000 barrels of oil a day mark. Production consistent, but these numbers are absolutely fabulous. I don't feel the need to go through all these strategic milestones, but a couple of them I just want to focus in on. 70% of the personnel is reskilling, which I think is really important in this industry. They clearly have plans, rather than just to produce share buybacks, pay a ton of dividends, they want this business to continue going for the long term. They're making alliances for hydrogen development. They've added, allocated $1.8 billion towards evaluation and development of natural gas discoveries in Colombia by 2024. They continue to produce record refining results at the Cartagena refinery. Growing production, 720 thousand barrels of oil a day in Q3 and growing operation expansion in the Permian Basin all of which are fantastic as a 49.5% EBITDA margin as of Q3 2022 and its gross debt to EBITDA in this quarter was 1.8 times which is ever improving record profitability of course Brent crude prices were high but this is a business that has continued 
strength to strength even when crude prices are more normal or when they're exceptionally low. Not only is it diversified in terms of its income sources in midstream, telecoms, green hydrogen, potentially transmission, roads and refineries, but also in terms of geographies, it has a big presence in the Permian Basin, the Gulf of Mexico. Obviously, its largest presence is in Colombia, but also has presence in Brazil, telecom stations in Argentina, Chile, Bolivia, Peru. Very, very little of Latin America and North America is not covered by this business has 120 plus years of experience between the two companies, 18,000 committed employees, geographical presence in nine countries. This is a really strong business, a really strong diversified business that has shown a long-term excellent financial performance and willingness to return capital to shareholders in a sustainable way, even at very high dividend yields. This business very rarely trades at an exceptionally high price forward earnings. You can see the highest of the last six years or so in 2017 with a price for an earnings of around 17. This is an exceptionally low valuation right now. Currently sitting a price to trail earnings around three, price forward earnings of around seven, and a price of cash flow trailing of under three. Exceptional valuation for a company that is decla declaring and paying dividends in the 20% yield range. Most recent declared dividend was around 80 cents quarterly for an $11 company. This is a staggering valuation in my opinion and just shows the, I don't want to say prejudice, but how discounted companies outside of Europe and the, and the US are. Much like Petrobras, I believe this company will be trading three or four times higher if it were a North American or European oil major. There's just no real significant reason for this valuation to be so low other than essentially prejudice against South American and Latin American businesses. Because realistically, the chances of high windfall taxes of dividends being reduced, they are definitely possible, no doubt. They're not going to wipe the dividend away. It's still going to be an exceptionally high dividend, most likely. And also, this is happening in North America and across Europe. Oil and gas giants are being hit with massive windfall taxes. And in Latin America, much like Petrobras, this just hasn't came to pass. And much like Petrobras, it's going to continue paying its dividend at a really high rate. Likely going to be a 20% dividend yield. In the last, well, since July 2022, the stock has effectively done nothing but paid out exceptional dividends. That is a strategy to beat the market, in my opinion. And while it did look particularly juicy at those 52-bit lows, I'm really going to be putting a lot of thought into this company, digging in a bit deeper and deciding whether I want to invest because I'm already exposed to Petrobras. But I think this is just an exceptional opportunity to buy an excellent business at a very, very fair price. With that being said, I want to know your opinion in the comments down below. This is not financial advice, of course. You should do your own research and diligence, not just buy this company because I've told you to. But I think it's it's worth a look looking at these high dividend yield businesses to see if they're in traps. And I do not believe this one is. But of course, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like and subscribe when you join the video. I'll see you again next time.